Welcome back to our weekly environmental news report. First news. At the upcoming UN climate talks in Bonn, Germany, there will be a new figure on the table, 3 degrees Celsius. One of the biggest resulting threats of climate change to cities around the world is sea level rise, and data from the Climate Central group of scientists shows that 275 million people live in areas that will eventually be flooded at 3 degrees Celsius of global warming. Asian cities will be hardest hit, with 4 out of 5 people affected living in Asian coastal megacities such as Shanghai, Shenzhen, Bangkok, and Tokyo. According to analysis from The Guardian, cities including Shanghai, China, Alexandria, Egypt, Rio de Janeiro, and Osaka, Japan are among the worst affected. Miami would be inundated along with the entire bottom third of the U.S. state of Florida. A 3 degree Celsius rise would prolong droughts, strengthen hurricanes, and increase sea level rises that would reshape coastlines, which could take decades depending on the speed at which glaciers melt. South Korea's new government has announced it will cut air pollution by 30% within the next five years. Korea is now predicted to be among the countries worst hit by the global air pollution crisis, and it plans to target coal plants, take millions of diesel vehicles off the road, and cut emissions produced by industries across the nation. The government's goal is to reduce coal-generated electricity and increase the proportion of energy that comes from renewable sources and natural gas. Coal plants that are more than 30 years old will be shut down from March to June each year, and new coal-fired power plant projects will be re-examined. Although achieving the target of 20% by 2030 is difficult, reducing air pollution is a key political promise made by President Moon Jae-in to the South Korean people. Fashion designer Stella McCartney has never used leather, fur, or feathers in her products, and roughly half of every collection today is made with sustainable materials. She has recently collaborated with Bolt Threads, a startup that has created a product called Microsilk, which is a material that mimics the chemistry and strength of real silk created by spiders in nature. If produced at a large scale, Microsilk could revolutionize the fashion industry. The use of petroleum is limited, and manufacturing it does not require resources like land or water. McCartney ultimately wants other fashion companies to follow suit and use environmentally friendly materials in their clothing, saying, quote, This is not about public relations. My intention is to create real change in an industry that desperately needs it. According to the Center for Biological Diversity, the Pacific walrus is facing, quote, extinction from climate change after the White House declined to list the species as endangered. Chad Jay, who leads the Walrus Research Program at the USGS Alaska Science Center, says that walruses are losing habitat as sea ice continues to melt. Walruses depend on the ice for breeding, feeding, and nursing their young, and avoiding predators, but have had to haul out on shore as ice coverage decreases, which is further away from their feeding grounds in shallow waters. On the other hand, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service suggests walruses will be able to adapt to their changing environment, estimating that there are around 230,000 Pacific walruses left in the wild. In lab experiments, tiny corals that make up reefs have been observed to eat broken down plastic fragments similar to those in marine pollution. According to a new study in Marine Pollution Bulletin, some of the chemicals infused in the plastic may actually taste like food to the corals. In their experiments, researchers Alexander Seymour and Austin Allen at Duke University offered two different kinds of plastics to corals from North Carolina's coastal waters. One was plastic dipped in seawater and covered with bacteria, and the other choice was weathered plastic without added bacteria. The corals ingested more of the bacteria-free plastic, which suggests that an ingredient in factory plastic is appetizing to corals. Through this study, perhaps we can prevent organisms from eating plastic in the first place. That's all for this week's environmental news report. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and help promote environmental awareness. Thank you.